Welcome to the Investing Podcast presented by Tusk Media. This is Outsider Trading, an audio and video deep dive into the people, places, and things that we find most interesting in the market. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Investing Podcast presented by Tusk Media. I'm Andrew Hall. Joining me, a very hairy Sam Frost. Sam Frost. So I only trimmed so that I'd have a little head start. Head start. Yeah. yeah. So if you're just now joining us for some reason, I don't know where you've been, but we're doing a Movember no shave thing. We're going to grow mustaches, maybe beards, ridiculous things. Sam, getting a head start there. But if you go to our Twitter page, twitter.com slash Tusk Media LLC, the pinned tweet right there, you can click, go to the team name, which I love. Yep. No money, no problems. And you can donate to the team or you can donate to us individually. So Sam needs some love. Nobody's donated yet, probably because he's cheating. Uh, and already, or because I have the best facial hair in the whole office right now. That might be it. That might be it. That's debatable. Scotty already does kind of have a beard coming in. <laughs> Scotty looks like this, but more. Yeah. And he's shaved with a straight razor. Yeah. Right? So pretty impressive stuff. So check that out. Uh, hit subscribe no matter how you're viewing this. YouTube Seeking Alpha listening to it on iTunes. We appreciate you being here. Today we're going to recap uh, some of our trip to Chicago. We mm -hmm. went to Chicago last week. Sam loves Chicago because it is central time zone, which means you can go to bed earlier. Right. Um, so we went out to dinner. Some of us enjoyed the nightlife. Sam called it a night early. He and Krebs went back to the hotel. Like, oh, it was like a full, like, what, 30 minutes before you all came in? Easily. Easily. At least 30 <laughs> minutes before everybody else. Interesting thing about Chicago Cubbies in the World Series, first Cubbies. time ever, uh, first World Series win in decades, and mm -hmm. the sports bar cut us off at 10-15. I don't get it. Come on, Chicago. Long time um, fan here. I became an Indians fan that day, so uh, go I words, yeah. Yeah, Chicago also <coughs> does not like Andrew after that one. Yeah. Like, what was that, probably like 30 minutes? Yeah, so and by the time you watch this, I'll be wearing my uh, Indians World Series Champions t-shirt. Sure enough, that's, that's um, a bold call. So let's just jump in right now. We went to Invest for Kids, a conference that benefits charity. It's like a half-day thing. I really like the format. You go and you hear people pitch one or two ideas in and out, move, move, move. Uh, so today we're going to talk about mm -hmm. NVIDIA, mm -hmm. uh, a long pitch that we heard from Josh Wolf, the co-founder of Lux Capital. He was an interesting guy, venture capital guy, VC guy. You could tell the second he walked up that he was a VC guy because yeah. he came in like a kind of a mock turtleneck sweater type of look. <laughs> Uh, I don't know quite what was going on there. Everybody else suit and tie. Uh, you could tell, like, if you lined them all up, VC guy. Yeah. Like, no doubt. So one of the things he talked about was how there are actually opportunities in the public equity markets that he derives from what he sees in the VC space. So some mm -hmm. of the more speculative stuff that he's doing, where maybe the success rate is kind of hit or miss. He can kind of take some of those themes and see what's really popular uh, with some of this, especially like kind of Silicon Valley type tech investing and say, right. here's what I want to look at. And what he was pushing was NVIDIA, mm -hmm. uh, particularly because he was <clears throat> talking about the chips that they're making and GPUs. So explain what GPU is right. to the people out there and myself. So, so GPU is a big fad right now in te the tech world. Uh, it's the new, I guess, baby brother of CPUs, the more athletic baby brother uh, coming in. And so a CPU uh, performs tasks, you know, for a computer, and it's sequentially. So it's like you have 10 things that needs to get done, and it's like bam, 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 bam. All of them happen one after another. And so the world has been, how can we make that happen faster? Mm -hmm. GPUs step up, and so what G GPUs do is it's all simultaneous. So you have those same 10 tasks that need to get done instead of the sequential like one after another, it just, they all happen at the same time. It's got like a core, like, I guess, I don't know, they were saying it's a core CPU that runs the GPU. I'm not sure if that's the right way to say it or not. So don't quote me on that, but. If we're wrong, it's been wrong. Right, and so, but basically it says like, all right, like, you two go now, you five go now. And basically tells everything when to go and all runs at the same time. So it's much more efficient. Um, and so where this guy basically got to, he gave us a whole long pitch about if you can't, it was a great pitch, I need to step back, he was, he was a good talker, yeah. that was another way you can tell he's a venture capitalist because he gets pitches all the time, I'm yep. sure. And um, so his thing was, if you can't predict the future, invent it. And that's like the, I guess, motto for Silicon Valley and all these tech companies. And so he's seeing all these startups that he's investing in, all these techie companies, and he came to discover that inside is not Intel, uh, which most people probably wouldn't believe because mm -hmm. we've all heard Intel inside. Yeah. He said he saw NVIDIA, 
NVIDIA, you know, is crushing the, this GPU mm -hmm. world. And uh, the main thing that, the last thing he got to was, was it Zook? Yep. Zook, uh, they manufacture autonomous cars. And so what GPUs are done, they're known for, NVIDIA is known for graphic processing. So they're bringing in data and they're creating an image. And so that, that data comes in, I guess in ones and zeros, however it comes in, creates an image. And so these autonomous car companies, I'm, assu I'm assuming it's companies, plural, not right. just Zook, is they're using them to basically collect data from around the car, create an image that the car can recognize. So these GPUs are important because it's collecting things and simultaneously creating an image versus sequentially. So it's right. much faster, which in theory should make these autonomous cars uh, come to reality sooner than later. Yeah, and it makes sense because you start to look at what these chips have been used for previously, things like gaming. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of start to say, well, if it's good enough for gaming, I'd like to think that's a little bit more realistic than what we're seeing in regular day-to-day -day functions, but hopefully we can even improve on that within these cars, within these autonomous cars. And the case that he made basically was to go long NVIDIA, a stock that we've actually got a funny pitch on in a minute that we heard from a former intern here, uh, and to short Intel. And a big part of that thesis was that, according to him, he said about 85% of the GPU space belongs to NVIDIA. We've done a little digging. We can't quite find that market share, and we don't necessarily see the huge, massive barrier to entry in that space among the chip and processor makers. So it's almost hard to say, yes, this is gonna continue because on one hand, Intel seems like a large enough company that they're gonna be able to enter there. Uh, so we were, I think we were all pretty, pretty meh on yeah. the shorting Intel idea. Right. But the Nvidia thing is certainly attractive. It's a little bit skewed because if you look at the stock, it's a stock that you know in February was trading under 30 bucks and now it's you know returned 2X that money right. just about. So it's kind of hard to really dive in head first because we're basically seeing this hockey stick. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, it's certainly they do seem to be the leader in that space. Yeah, and to your point about Intel, they acquired, I don't remember who it was, but they, uh, I was reading a report, they were acquired a company who specializes in mm -hmm. GPUs mm -hmm. to you know, basically get in that market right. and start to compete. And they're big enough, it seems like they could acquire NVIDIA. Exactly. And so I don't know that if we really thought that, then we would... Mm -hmm you know, up our stake in NVIDIA. Right, right. Um, and we, we don't own any right now. We're looking at it, we're considering it, kind of as a way to get some exposure to the autonomous car thing, which we continue to think is right is in the future. I think there's almost a, uh, a regulatory threat that's almost the next hurdle to clear, mm -hmm. be cleared. We have to get these things actually legal. But I think the actual vehicles themselves are maybe farther along than we even realize. So something we talked about was that, you know, in autonomous cars, you know, we kind of relate them to maybe like solar energy companies, such as First Solar. For, you know, solar energy has been something that we thought is going to take off for years. You know, that's like the, been the next big thing, you know, mm -hmm. for a long time. And here we are, First Solar still struggling. You know, they've kind of gotten a little tailwind because of the presidential election, especially with Hillary. Um, so that's something that we don't want to, that we're a little worried about with NVIDIA and the autonomous cars. Right. We see there, we think there's huge growth there. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously if the second autonomous cars take off, if in fact GPUs are what's being used, especially if it's NVIDIA, NVIDIA will blow up. Yeah. And um, so, so we, we've talked about getting some exposure to that. We could be early. Um, but I think it's definitely an industry that anyone will tell you that probably want a little bit of exposure to. And it's certainly not stock that I would say, oh, NVIDIA is cheap, but it's also one that when you actually dug into the valuation, it's not as insanely overvalued as you would necessarily think, especially given the growth outlook and the growth pro profile mm -hmm. that you see there. Uh, probably the most effective pitch we've heard on NVIDIA was this summer. Uh, intern Austin, who you all know and hate, uh, he pitched us the stock, and his thesis was basically this. For context, Austin had been playing in a stock market portfolio simulation contest with some of his buddies, maybe fraternity brothers, something like that. And uh, his pitch was, hey, I've made some money off NVIDIA. I got it at like 25 bucks. It's at 40. I'm about to sell it. Y'all should buy it. <laughs> um, so that was his pitch. He was selling it, so therefore we should buy it. In hindsight, we should have bought it at about we 40. We should have uh, bought he, it. He also wanted us to get out, I think, at like 45 or 50. Right. So we would have only made a little bit of money. It's now trading like over 70 bucks. So NVIDIA, definitely something to keep an eye on. We are digging in deeper on it. We do not hold it currently for client portfolios, but definitely something we're going to continue to look at. Uh, if we got kind of a, a sell-off there, I think it'd be a stock that would be uh, probably more likely to be more volatile, especially towards the downside than the market as a whole, so you may actually get some buying opportunities mm -hmm. if you see some market volatility in general. But definitely something we're going to be keeping an eye on. Uh, hit subscribe, check us out on Twitter, Tusk Media.
LLC and donate to our Movember page. Sam, thanks for being here. <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> Pistol, sign it off. Boom. <laughs> Tusk Media is a subsidiary of Narwhal Capital Management. Ratings and reviews of Tusk Media content are not to be construed as endorsements of opinions, analysis, or services offered by Tusk or its parent company. The opinions and predictions shared here are our professional beliefs at the time of publication. We are not under duress from any of the corporate entities mentioned. This is not a solicitation to take any particular action. Although we are investment advisors, this information should not be considered investment, legal, or tax advice. We strive to be as impartial, insightful, and accurate as possible. We base our opinions, analysis, and calculations on information we believe to be reliable, but we cannot guarantee its accuracy. We can, however, guarantee that our opinions will sometimes be flat out wrong due to a variety of factors. Employees and clients of Narwhal Capital Management may or may not hold positions in the securities detailed and may or may not hold these positions in the future. A full list of all securities purchased, sold, or held during the 12 months preceding the date of this publication can be provided upon request. Unless otherwise noted, all data accessed via MarketWatch or the Bloomberg Terminal. Past performance does not guarantee future results. A copy of Narwhal's form ADV is available at the SEC's website, www.advisorinfo.sec.gov, or from Narwhal upon written request.